My next guest joining us on the program is Gerald Salente. He's editor and publisher of the Trends Journal. He's got his new top trends for 2009, and I just want to say he was spot on in 2008. The prediction in 2008 was called the Panic of 2008. Gerald, why don't we begin with your top trend forecast in the years ahead. Your first one that you come up with is called the Collapse of 2009. Let's begin with that. Well, the reason we're calling it the Collapse of 2009, and followed by the Panic of 2008, is that when you look at current events forming future trends, we see the next shoe to drop is going to be the commercial real estate sector. And when that falls, it's going to be much harder and cause much more damage than a so-called subprime problem and the financial crises that occurred during 2008. Let me explain why. In 2008, at the end of the year, we saw holiday sales. They were terrible. In the retail sector, women's apparel was off 23%. Home electronics and appliances down uh, some 27%. But, Jim, the real number in here to look at is luxury items. They were off 35%. This is telling us that this thing is collapsing from the top down. Luxury never gets hit like that. And most importantly, when we look back to 2008, we saw major retailers go under. Circuit City, Linens and Things, Stephen Barry, Sharper Image, uh, KB Toys, etc., Bennigan's. And we also saw many store closings from Starbucks, Office Depot. The question becomes, who's going to rent all of this vacant retail space? The answer is nobody. And then you look at the commercial sector and finance. We saw Bear Stern, Lehman Brothers, Merrill Lynch, Wachovia, Washington Mutual, bond companies, back offices, closing down, leaving commercial real estate vacant. Who is going to rent all that empty office space? The answer is nobody. And as you well know, being a financial expert, the commercial sector is much more highly leveraged than than the home sector by a huge margin. That's where the collapse is going to occur. So when we look at what's going on in retail, we look what's going on in financial, we look what's going on in commercial, that's why we're saying there's going to be a collapse and no one's going to be able to save it. And, you know, you bring up something that's rather significant. If we go back to, let's say, the recession of 91, the recession of 2001, you never saw the drop at the high end as you're seeing today. Is that correct? Exactly. You know, you look at these numbers. I mean, these are often, these are, these are depression era fall offs. I mean, 24, 35. I mean, these are huge numbers. And then you look at the new data coming in on retail sales, you know, day after day, week after week, they keep getting worse. People are one job away from losing everything. And that's the other thing. You start looking at the unemployment numbers. And as you know, there are two sets of books. And both are imperfectly legitimate. It's just how they report them. And the total unemployment figure by the government is around 13.2%. Those are people that are no longer uh, getting unemployment benefits or are working part-time but want full-time work. Let's go to what this leads to, which is uh, your second theme, and you call that the greatest depression, because certainly the number that you just mentioned, the total unemployment picture, which is around a little over 13%, you know, those are starting to sound more like depression numbers than recession. Exactly. I mean, we're only, what, 12 points away. And and this thing is just beginning. I mean, we saw, what, the last quarter of 2008, what, they lose about 2 million jobs just in the last quarter? I mean, so, that, no, this thing is really catching momentum, and it's going to get much worse as these retail numbers start coming in. And remember, the United States economy is over two-thirds consumer-based. So when the consumer dries up, what do you do for an encore? One of the uh, trends that you put right after the collapse of 2009, a trend post, you go, taxpayer warning, and all levels of government, and I'm reading from your letter here, will be caught up in the private sector collapse as tax base shrink and tax revenues sharply decline. Attempts will be made to raise taxes in the forms of tolls, higher user and license fees, so you could see, as you're predicting here, an anti-tax movement that could take root and flourish this year. Yeah, we're going to see a revolt, actually. You know, as a Bronx boy, my saying is, when people lose everything and they have nothing left to lose, they lose it. 
and people are going to start losing it. As I said, people are one job away from losing everything. You know, we have a, a little clause in our, a little statement in our order page for the Trends Journal that if you're facing financial difficulty, unemployed, disabled, student, etc., you know, let us know and we'll do the best we can to, to provide it to you. The stories that we get every day is enough to rip your heart out. People have worked their whole lives, have nothing to show for it, they've lost everything. And in many cases, they've been strong-armed or, or arm-twisted, I should say, by their brokers and financial advisors not to take proactive measures into the belief that everything would be okay. We're going to see they're squeezing the little people. It's one of our trends. You look what's happening here in New York. The guy, they call himself a governor. I'm a political atheist, by the way. I don't believe in anybody's political religion. We don't bow to politicians or genuflect to leaders just to let you know where we're coming from. We look in world events, current events, consumer trends, business trends for what they are, not the way we want them to be. It's not what's good or bad, right or wrong, what you like or not like. So having said that, they want to pass 130 new taxes on the people. Yeah, at a time when median household income is way below 1999 levels, about 4% below, when we're looking at people, again, losing jobs, not can't make ends meet, cost of everything going through the roof, and now they want to raise taxes, so they're raising tax on tolls, they're raising sin taxes, hassle taxes. Pretty soon they're going to be toilet taxes. Now, I don't know if you see it in your area, but Gerald here, we have speed traps uh, springing up all over the place. They're giving tickets, and so this is another form of what you're talking about. Go give tickets because we need revenues. Same thing is happening here. Well, I just had a, a policeman barge into my place without knocking yesterday into our office walk right in. I, I parked my car overnight in a county parking lot. They had my name. They thought I committed a crime. You know, you, for this, you know, if, if I said anything wrong or looked at them the wrong way, they'd, they'd throw handcuffs on you, drag you into jail. It's like having three beers, you know, when you're only supposed to have two, and, and you're good for jail. But this guy, like a Bernie Madoff, you know, this guy's locked up in his penthouse. And you see, Jim, this is what's going on and why there's going to be a revolution in this country. Because everything now is for the too big to fails, and the too small to saves go down with the ship. It's a perfect Titanic situation. You know, when, when the Titanic was going down, the lifeboats were there for the wealthy. The rest of the people were locked into steerage, and they weren't even given life preservers. You know, one of the trend posts, and I've read this in our local paper here, has talked about it, but one of the trend posts that you talk about is after the November election, the sale of safes and guns rose dramatically. I've, the local papers have done stories here about that. Crime on the rise and self-protection in all its aspects will become a major trend. Petty thieves, con artists, muggers, burglars, kidnappers, street gangs, organized criminals, and so uh, rent a bodyguard and burglar-proof money mattresses and anti-theft will attract resources. And you're also going to look at that happening a lot also in the technology end. You know, where headhunters are still finding employment for people skilled in the electronic area on how to protect fraud. And this is a huge business. And it's only going to get worse, and it's going to be a worldwide crime. You know, the global economic system is collapsing in front of us, and no one knows what to do. I ask everyone the same question. The only two things they could come up with, the government, is either to adjust interest rates, which in this case, they're adjusting them to all-time lows. Whether the Bank of England just bring it down to 351-year lows? Yeah. We're, we're near zero. Or they print more money. That's it. That's the only two things like they come up with. You're not going to get out of it like that. You can't print your way into prosperity. So we're going to see this thing unwinding, and they're not going to know what to do about it. And we're reading these reports that are coming in about, in Arizona, for example, the state police training.